Hello class 10th, I hope you all are well there at home and are enjoying watching TV shows, movies and of course your study channels. Blue sky, green forests and rainbows are enjoyed by everyone. At night we see twinkling of stars, beautiful signboards in marketplace. But how is it possible to see things around us? We have eyes to see. Suppose you are standing in a dark room. Will you be able to see things kept in the room? No. Why? Because there is no light. So, today we will start with the chapter of physics that is light, reflection and refraction. In today's session, we will discuss about reflection of light through a plane mirror and spherical mirrors. First of all, what is a ray of light? As light travels in a straight line, it shows the direction of movement of light, which is called a ray of light. A highly polished surface, such as a mirror, reflects most of the light falling on it. You are already familiar with the laws of reflection of light. Let us recall these laws. First, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And second, the incident ray, the normal to the mirror at the point of incidence and the reflected ray all lie in the same plane. These laws of reflection are applicable to all types of reflecting surfaces including spherical surfaces. You are familiar with the formation of image by a plane mirror. What are the properties of the image? So, image formed by a plane mirror is always virtual and erect. Now, before discussing further characteristics of image formed by a plane mirror, let's discuss what are real image and a virtual image. A real image is formed in front of the mirror and could be projected only on a screen and a virtual image appears behind the mirror and cannot be projected on a screen. The size of image is equal to that of the object. The image formed is as far behind the mirror as the object is in front of it. Further, the image is laterally inverted. How would the images be when the reflecting surfaces are curved? Let us explore. If you take a large shining spoon and try to look at your face in its curved surfaces from both sides, you will observe the image as shown in this picture. Do you find any differences between the characteristics of the image formed on both the surf curved surfaces? The curved surface of a shining spoon could be considered as a curved mirror. The most commonly used type of a curved mirror is the spherical mirror. The reflecting surface of such mirrors can be considered to form a part of the surface of a sphere. Such mirrors whose reflecting surfaces are spherical are called spherical mirrors. We shall now study about spherical mirrors in some detail. The reflecting surface of a spherical mirror may be curved inwards or outwards. A spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inwards, that is, faces towards the center of the sphere, is called a concave mirror. And a spherical mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outwards is called a convex mirror. You may note in these diagrams that the back of the mirror is shaded. You may now understand that the surface of the spoon curved inwards can be approximated to a concave mirror and the surface of the spoon bulged outwards can be approximated to a convex mirror. Before we move further on spherical mirrors, we need to recognize and understand the meaning of a few terms. These terms are commonly used in discussions about spherical mirrors. The center of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is a point called the pole. It lies on the surface of the mirror. The pole is usually represented by the letter P. The spherical surface of a spherical mirror forms a part of a sphere. This sphere has a center. This point is called the center of curvature of spherical mirror. It is represented by the letter C. Please note that the center of curvature is not a part of the mirror. It lies outside its reflecting surface. The center of curvature of a mirror lies in front of it. 
However, it lies behind the mirror in case of a convex mirror. The radius of the sphere of which the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror forms a part is called the radius of curvature of the mirror. It is represented by the letter R. You may note the distance PC is equal to the radius of curvature. Imagine a straight line passing through the pole and the center of curvature of a spherical mirror. This line is called the principal axis. Remember that principal axis is normal to the mirror at its pole. Let us understand an important term related to mirrors through an activity. Hold the concave mirror in your hand and direct its reflecting surface towards the sun. Direct the light reflected by the mirror onto a sheet of paper held close to the mirror. Move the sheet of paper back and forth gradually until you find on the paper sheet a bright sharp spot of light. Hold the mirror and the paper in the same position for a few minutes. What do you observe? The paper at first begins to burn producing smoke. Eventually it may catch fire. Now why does it burn? The light from the sun is converged at a point as a sharp bright spot by the mirror. In fact, this spot of light is the image of the sun on the sheet of paper. This point is the focus of the concave mirror. The heat produced due to the concentration of sunlight ignites the paper. The distance of this image from the position of the mirror gives the approximate value of focal length of the mirror. Let us try to understand this observation with the help of a ray diagram. Observe this figure closely. A number of rays parallel to the principal axis are falling on a concave mirror. Observe the reflected rays. They are all meeting or intersecting at a point on the principal axis of the mirror. This point is called the principal focus of the concave mirror. And now similarly observe this figure. How are the rays parallel to the principal axis reflected by a convex mirror? The reflected rays appear to come from a point on the principal axis. This point is called the principal focus of the convex mirror. The principal focus is represented by the letter F. The distance between the pole and the principal focus of a spherical mirror is called the focal length. It is represented by the letter F. The diameter of the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is called its aperture. In this figure, distance MN represents the aperture. We shall consider in our discussion only such spherical mirrors whose aperture is much smaller than its radius of curvature. Is there a relationship between the radius of curvature R and focal length F of a spherical mirror? For spherical mirrors of small apertures, the radius of cur curvature is found to be equal to twice the length of focal length. We put this as R is equal to 2F. This implies that the principal focus of a spherical mirror lies midway between the pole and the center of curvature. You have studied about the image formation by plane mirrors. You also know the nature, position and relative size of the images found by them. How about the images found by spherical mirrors? How can we locate the image found by a concave mirror for different positions of the object? Are the images real or virtual? Are they enlarged, diminished or have the same size? Let's explore this with an activity. Take a concave mirror and find its approximate focal length as studied earlier. Place the concave mirror on a stand and mark a line on a table. Place the stand over the line and mark F, P and C on the line. Keep an object at a position far beyond the C. Place a paper screen and move it in front of mirror till you get a sharp bright image of the object on it. Note down the nature, position and size of the image. Repeat the activity by placing the candle just beyond C, at C, between F and C and at F and between P and F. In one of the cases you may not get the image on the screen. 
when the object is between F and P. Study the formation of image with the help of ray diagrams. The intersection of at least two reflected rays give the position of image of the point object. Any two of the following rays can be considered for locating the image. A ray parallel to the principal axis after reflection will pass through the principal focus in case of a concave mirror or appear to diverge from the principal focus in case of convex mirror. A ray passing through the principal focus of a concave mirror or a ray which is directed towards the principal focus of a convex mirror after reflection will emerge parallel to the principal axis. A ray passing through a, the center of curvature of a concave mirror or directed in the direction of the center of curvature of a convex mirror after reflection is reflected back along the same path. The light rays come back along the same path because the incident rays fall on the mirror along the normal to the reflecting surface. A ray incident obliquely to the principal axis towards a point P, pole of the mirror, of the concave mirror or a convex mirror is reflected obliquely. The incident and reflected rays follow the laws of reflection at the point of incidence, that is point P, making equal angles with the principal axis. Remember that in all these cases, the laws of reflection are followed. At the point of incidence, the incident ray is reflected in such a way that the angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence. Now, let us study the image formation of an object kept at different positions from the concave mirror. When the object is at infinity, that is far beyond C, then the image formed is highly diminished at F, real and inverted. When the object is beyond C, the image formed is between C and F, diminished, inverted and real. When the object is at C, the image is also formed at C of same size, real and inverted. When the object is between C and F, the image formed is beyond C, enlarged, real and inverted. When the object is at F, that is at focus of the concave mirror, the image formed is at infinity, highly enlarged, real and inverted. When the object is kept between F and the pole of the mirror, the image formed is behind the mirror, that is virtual, enlarged and upright. We consider two positions of the object for studying the image formed by a convex mirror. First is when the object is at infinity and the second position is when the object is at a finite distance from the mirror. The ray diagrams for the formation of image by a convex mirror for these two positions is given here. Let us see how the image is formed by a convex mirror when the object is at a finite position from the mirror. At every position the image formed by the object by a convex mirror is always virtual, upright and diminished. Now let us study about uses of concave mirrors. Concave mirrors are commonly used in torches, searchlights and vehicles headlights to get powerful parallel beams of light. They are often used as shaving mirrors to see a larger image of the face. The dentists use concave mirrors to see large images of the teeth of patients. Large concave mirrors are used to concentrate sunlight to produce heat in solar furnaces. Convex mirrors are commonly used as rear view mirrors in vehicles. These mirrors are fitted on the sides of the vehicle, enabling the driver to see traffic behind him to facilitate safe driving. Convex mirrors are preferred because they always give an erect, though diminished, image. 
also they have a wider field of view as they are curved outwards thus convex mirrors enable the driver to view much larger area than would be possible with a plane mirror so this was all for today thank you and have a nice day